footballers in the snow. The dark comes early now on Saturdays. Under the aurorae of the floodlights' huge radiant dice, the team's jerseys glow like a kid's painting, and the luminous raincoats of the police on crowd control are warm as pub windows. But overhead, a polar winter exhales. Its breath and its long night, its power cut, sweep south. The first flurry of snow blows in as if the planet had lurched like a drunk on ice. The fans blur on the opposite terrace. The linesman evaporates on his line. The yellow cops, the footballers in red and blue, waver, diminish and recede. The vast pitch whitens under the flakes thrown sideways into the stadium. The goals are swallowed up by light years of bleached ground. It's as if some impatient cosmic law of entropy, say, had raised its hand, as if the world's end was in this last glimpse of twenty-two men in colourless shirts and the single figure in black who stops in the faint tracks he has just noticed and raises a whistle to his lips. Salting the Bray We are tilted against the constellations, hinged to the sea, where the ferries drift into Larn like sluggish fireworks. I wait with the torch at the edge of the headlamp's visible world. The tarmac already glistens. You dig the rock salt from the yellow bin in turns and walk each spadeful carefully down, the father instructing his long son gruffly, the boy embarrassed, sullen, yet keen to do well what may this one's save lives which is to swing the granite pink grit in a crescent across the slope so that caught in light it falls like water, slaps down like a seal, spreads out like the tail of a comet as seen and hand stitched by the nuns of Bayeux. What did you say? Sharing out two spades and a torch. We'll shovel, you shine. The cold night fumes in the glare from the harbour and power plant. Light and work, are they opposites? The radio mast on the hill burns one red bulb, a hot coal, an all-night broadcast. Ice and salt dissolve each other on the steep camber. And this dog leg, safe as houses now, settles like a dreaming dog, arches its scintillating crooked back and thaws. Recorder music. 1970 mumble. They are arming the clans. Rigged out in trousers edged with tartan. Each of us gets a cardboard box to open. Recorders. Dismantled and assembled like the sniper's gun in the day of the jackal. There's a small brush to dry off excess spittle. Cannon fodder for the Glen Estate Boot Boys, G-E-B-B -B for short. We'd wear our skinners to our knees if we were let. Our clerk's commandos have a secret compass lodged within the soul. The hardest lads knock studs into the toe caps so they're walking north whichever way they go. After a year or two of playing the recorder, it'll be sheep and goats the elite caters of the consort versus the common soldiers. Now, though, our caterwauling might be pre-lapsarian, a single tone-deaf entity. The whole class makes a babel squeak as we nail-bitten fingers grope to close the gaps, dividing can and can't, might, won't, fond hopes, and never in a million years, perhaps. Perhaps.